this is Kaylee. I am watching myself <laughs> draw, like a lot of us do, to talk about my April journal theme, which is Tom and Jerry. I've been doing classic cartoons for the past year. I decided at first when I started journaling and learning about the whole bullet journal, I've always been a big journaler, but I just started to really up my game when I read Really, it wasn't just Ryder Carroll's bullet journal book. It was all of the videos on YouTube of all artists creating art in their bullet journal that really got me going. And at first I thought, I'm not going to do a theme. No way am I going to do a theme. It just seemed like a waste of time. But in the past year, I started doing a theme for every single month. So last month was Mighty Mouse. January, I think, was Woody Woodpecker. December was The Grinch. And I think November was Fat Albert. But I've done all the videos on my YouTube channel, so I would request that you go back and look at some of those if you want to get some ideas. I really think if you want to start improving on your art, try cartoons. Cartoons are easier because there's not so much shading involved. And I always, even when I see regular people, it just seems harder for me to, to draw a, an unanimated person than a cartoon. So maybe, maybe my brain will eventually be able to get over to regular people, right? With unanimated, it would be a good way to do it. So I started this channel to promote my graphic memoir. It's entitled, Mom Remembers Me. I used my health and fitness knowledge to stop my mother with mild dementia from forgetting me. And I got, it's really corny, but I got back into art taking care of my mother. So I highly encourage caregivers to maybe use some kind of art. So I started going out to paint nights a lot of times to um, entertain my mother. And so she got to walk around. I used to always challenge her brain by having her look at what I was painting, copying the instructor, and having her just tell me what was still missing from that picture. And she liked being out. She hated to stay home, and I can't say as I blame her. Uh, I had a lot of crazy stuff happen taking care of my mother. It's all in my book. But there's no way that she deserved to ever be locked in a lockdown unit. I blame everybody involved for trying to take my mother away from me. They wanted to lock her in a lockdown unit for their own revenue, their own insurance money, and it would have been so cruel to have locked her in a lockdown unit. She could always have a normal conversation to the minute that she died. She could never, ever, ever be coerced to do anything that she didn't want to do up until the last seconds that she died. I couldn't even get her to sit out, lay on her back with her legs up. If she didn't want to do it, she was not going to do it. She could never, ever, I repeat, never be coerced to do anything that she didn't want to do. So if she didn't want to do it, there was nothing I could ever convince her to do. So everything she did, she could always comprehend um, what was in a conversation. She could always understand a whole conversation. If she couldn't remember it, then she made a joke like, I don't know what you're talking about. But a lot of people don't remember conversations, right? But she always could have a normal conversation. She did not deserve to be locked in this lockdown unit, which was a lot, all catatonic people. It would have been so cruel and inhumane to have locked her in there. So I'm 100% glad that I fought in probate court for two months to get her out. She died a very comfortable death, all warm in her bed, um, with me knowing that I, she, that I loved her. So she wasn't abandoned in a lockdown unit. And she learned a lot. That's what I always want to question. They always say that she couldn't learn anymore. She learned my neighborhood. She learned my two colleges that I teach at. She, oh, she learned everything, so she, she was fine. I think there's a big difference between someone who can't live alone anymore versus somebody that needs to be watched 24-7. So she never needed to be watched 24-7 because she, she didn't do anything dangerous to herself or others. She, she didn't do anything kind of what I would consider obsessive compulsive. She didn't put the wrong things in the refrigerator. <laughs> she didn't do anything like that at all. So, so I still made her think all the time. I still challenged her. We went out to choose. I always think that going out to salad bars and having her choose what to eat 
kept her some of her autonomy. And then she also made her think. Because when we went to restaurants with a menu, I think another reason why she didn't want to stay home is, number one, so concentrating on watching TV and then also reading. She couldn't do that anymore. And there's lots of people that don't read. I meet people all the time that tell them that they don't read. And then we were supposed to read and write every single day. So being going out made her decide what she wanted to eat. So I had to always go, okay, now you pick. And then sometimes it's like, oh, no, you pick. And I would pick her favorite. And then she would complain, I oh, always get me the same thing. It was always such a funny thing, right? So I want to encourage caregivers to fight, be your caregivers, sheepdog. Um, they did for you what you would want them to do for you and I also put in my book if you fault your parent for not being the perfect parent and not doing everything right then I challenge you to try to be their parent and see how you do I never had any kids so it was it was significantly easier for me to take start taking care of my mother but if you have kids I can't help but think why can't you tag team if, you, if you've got several People in your family, also grandkids, why can't you all tag team so it's not so much of a challenge for one person? It just seems like one person always takes on that burden and then everybody else in the family believes that they should still, everything should still go evenly amongst everybody. No, if, if my mother had le been left in that nursing home, nothing, there would have been nothing left for anybody in the family. So I'm really glad that I took care of her. She's really glad that she took care of her. I had lots of good, funny conversations with her. It was a good time. I'm glad I did it. I'm really glad I did it. And even though my mother was a huge pain in the ass, and like I said, she could never be coerced to do anything that she didn't want to do to the second that she died. And everybody who knew her knew that. So here I am drawing Tom and Jerry, like I said, little caregiving tips. I actually started using these um, canvas things.
welcome to my channel. Thanks a whole heck of a bunch for clicking on this thumbnail. So today is my April Bujo, and my theme is Tom and Jerry. I've been doing classic cartoons for the past year, and I haven't done, I just started maybe putting them all out on YouTube the past six months. So check out some other ones if you like classic cartoons. Like last month was Mighty Mouse. And the, and the month before that, December, no, that was February was Mighty Mouse. January was, I think it was Woody Woodpecker. I got to go back and look. And of course, December, I did uh, the, the Grinch. I copied all from the original book from the Grinch. So go back and look at that too if you want to see some other classic cartoons. But this month is Tom and Jerry. So these are all pictures I got off the internet, copied them all. Um, I didn't I didn't trace them, but I do believe that tracing is helpful. I think that uh, there is controversy on tracing, but I personally, and I'm not a big long-time artist, but I have common sense <laughs> that tracing still helps you, teaches you. It's, I wonder whether it still gives you that brain-eye connection, and then also when it comes to to perspective and everything. So if you're having trouble, I think you should you should trace, but I'm not tracing. This I took this I took this picture. So this was I showed you drawing this earlier in this video, but now I just I, I'm not gonna tape myself coloring it all because I then I gotta move it all over the place and that would be boring for you to watch. So so now you get to watch all of my spreads all filled in and colored. So I want to forgive Kari, and I wish you well. So this is the first page. Month at month at a glance. This came out pretty good. I like this. Just a typical cartoon picture that I got off the internet. So you saw me drawing this. This was Tom and Jerry. You know, I, I do notice that I am very good at copying images. So different cartoonist and different artists drew Tom and Jerry just a little bit differently a little bit so I copied that now I look at it see Tom Tom looks different here and so does Jerry is it Tom is the cat and Jerry the mouse does anybody know let me know will you make a comment pretty please will you subscribe pretty please will you like <laughs> comment and subscribe you don't have to hit the alert button but if you could do that at least comment or like that would be my greatly appreciated so this is my second week you know what I do is I don't stick by the month I stick by the week so I started doing I started doing the week on Monday so which is in a couple of days today is April 1st so I'm record I'm recording this now so this is the next page and a big shout out of course to Gene Kelly I just if I have anybody hasn't seen anchors away I highly recommend that movie. And there's one dance scene where Gene Kelly is dancing with Jerry the Mouse that is fabulous, absolutely fabulous. So I had to take a picture and print it off the internet and put it in my bullet journal for Tom and Jerry for this month, right? And then here's another one from, I colored this in, right? This came out pretty good, right? I will I wonder that I copied, like I said, I copied it. I don't know where... Tom's other arm is. It's not around Jerry, and it wasn't in the picture, so where's his hand? <laughs> One of the, here's, another, here's another picture from the internet for, for Gene Kelly dancing with Jerry the Mouse. That's a really good dance sequence if you want to steal some good ideas, any dancers out there, right? And here is another picture of Tom and Jerry, my third week. And then this is my energy tracker. I do have another video talking about energy trackers and what you should look for. I do have another video on sleep. I think that people track the sleep, but if you don't take notes and see what could have hurt or helped your sleep, what good does it do? So I put down the, my t the times that I slept and the number of hours and any notes. So seeing what, see what I ate, what I drank, what could have affected it, right? So I keep track of all these things that I think that really affect my sleep. And when it comes to your health, there's three really important things that I teach all my students. Sleep is the most important thing and exercise and being mindful. And of course, being mindful encompasses everything else in the world, right? So being mindful, watch your thoughts. I did kind of goof a little bit. I see um, Jerry's ears kind of in Tom's eyeball there. 
I think I might fix that a little bit a little bit later on, but I wanted to get going with this video. So this is my exercise tracker. I've been teaching physical fitness for 35 years. For the past couple of years, I haven't taught all my classes, but I still always walk at least um, every day. Now, if I don't walk, I'm swimming. I usually take one day off every eight or nine days. I just feel like, okay, it's time for me to take a break and not exercise. Um, I, I don't, I don't really believe that we have to be elite fitness. The more I keep reading about health and fitness, just moderate fitness has the most amount of benefits. It doesn't take up so much time of your day, right? If you're trying to be elite fitness, you're going to spend two to three hours a day trying to be elite fitness. And I would bet, and if anybody has seen some actual studies on people that are moderately fit versus elite fitness, and of course, you know, when I was in grad school, they had all these charts that showed people that were sedentary versus people that overtrained and they had the exact same physiological markers, which meant that I believe that that was a perfect example of the point of, di the point of diminishing returns. So you can overtrain pretty easily trying to be elite fitness. So just go for moderate fitness. I go for a walk probably 60 to 90 minutes almost every day and I try to get out of breath, try to find some stairs at least once a time. And then, you know what is a very easy way to, to watch your fitness level is to track your resting heart rate. So I have that here in my exercise tracker. So you have to take it in the morning before you move, right? So once you wake up, see if you can lay there. I, I usually turn the light back on and then time my heart, count my heart rate for about 30 seconds and then multiply by two, of course, to get my resting heart rate. So staying in the, I'm usually in the, in the low 60s, so I'm trying to get down in the 50s. You know, cross-country skiers are down in the 20s because it's called your, AVO2, your, and your VO2 max. So your heart is strong enough to pump out more blood, more stroke volume each time it pumps so it doesn't have to pump as often. So that's why exercise and cardiovascular activity is really beneficial for your heart. And I'm sure all of you guys know that. I would hope you know that. <laughs> if you have any questions about that, by all means, please make a comment. Here's my exercise tracker. I always keep a, what I call a memories tracker every day. So every day I put like a little cute picture that I copy off the internet to 